Yes, so that brings us to the topic of today, uh, preparing your application. We're kind of expecting your application to highlight some kind of, uh, to expose some kind of REST endpoints. So pretty much uh, expose this functionality via HTTP. Uh, you're not supposed to HTTPS encryption. That's where HTTPS termination, that's what we are doing for you. That's what Compliant Commerce does for you. Um, for those of you who are using more recent APIs such as GraphQL, that's pretty much the same thing, right? It's just a slash GraphQL that is being exposed by HTTP. Nothing special needs to be done about it. Now, the other thing that we ask you is to enable structured logging. So often what happens is that if you're having a, an older application, uh, back then logs were meant for human consumption, whereas now logs are, first of all, going through quite a lot of machine pipelines before they finally end up in something that is for human consumption. And that is no different with compliant Kubernetes. So, you know, logs are being captured by Fluentd, they're sent up to Elasticsearch, then they're being visualized by Kibana. Kibana offers quite a lot of facilities for indexing and for, uh, for enabling you to query over your logs. But in order for you to be able to take advantage of this, your application needs to have structured logging enabled. So what that essentially means is that all of the logs are uh, output to standard output or standard error, and they feature a um, multi-line JSON format. And I can show that, um, maybe, maybe I can show it right now. So in uh, program languages such as Node.js, this is pretty simple to achieve. I, I basically just took here a, um, a logger called Morgan, which is pretty much what everybody uses uh, out there. And then I just had to add a few lines in order to make sure that it does structured logging so that it, it outputs a JSON object per line. And we even, um, we even have an example using .NET. Uh, I'm unfortunately not the author of this, so I cannot really give you that many details about how exactly to configure uh, a .NET in order to create uh, structured logging. But from what I could tell from the code, it feels like this is something that is built in and could just happens. So let me show you how this would look like from the terminal. Um, I'm here in the compliant commerce documentation, which I have just cloned uh, from GitHub. You can clone it also yourself. You can actually see that you can click on the GitHub project and you can clone it yourself. Otherwise, you have instructions here for how to clone it. I'm now going to just run this application uh, locally as let's say one would do it before um, running it locally, but not quite in development mode. So this is after we have already started packaging it into a Docker file in a container. So as to make sure that this application is packaged in a way exactly as you would run it in production. So then if I run this application and let me open another terminal window. and increase the font size so you can all see what I'm talking about. Um, so what I've just done is that I'm running lo the application locally on my laptop in a container. And this other thing script, this other script test locally pretty much just calls my application uh, on its default endpoint slash. And you can see that what my application did is that it logged one line of a JSON object. Uh, and this one is very easy afterwards to transmit through the various logging pipelines to index and to decode and to visualize in Kibana. So just wanted to highlight that it's really important for you to, to provide this because otherwise you will get into very messy uh, machinery to parse logs and to, to massage them in the right format and things like that. Don't do that. It just complicates your life needlessly. It creates also a lot of overhead for compliant commerce down the pipeline. Just aim for structured logging. It can be fairly simply enabled in common program languages. Uh, that's the best thing you can do. Then the other thing that we suggest to do to prepare your application to get the best out of it is to provide a slash metrics endpoint. So this pretty much exposes various metrics of your application. And that allows you to, for example, do fancy stuff such as get a nice dashboard and set alerts just to get an overall feeling for your application and so on. Now, I know that sometimes people are 
using or, or let's say collecting logs and then are folding those logs in a way that you create metrics. But I suggest you to think about metrics and logs differently because logs are pretty expensive to collect and they usually have a very limited retention. They're also pretty messy, right? They might contain personally identified information. They might, they might contain credentials, whatnot. Uh, they might contain IP addresses and all kind of scary stuff. Whereas metrics tend to contain just the right amount of information. They're a little bit lighter. They can be retained over longer periods of time. And we actually, actually do that in compliant Kubernetes. And they allow you to, uh, to get a better overview of what your application is doing. And so in Node.js, um, enabling metrics is as, simply, as simple as just adding one line of code. And we also have now an example for uh, .NET. Let me show that one too. Where the same thing, there is a uh, Prometheus library. Let me see if I can very quickly uh, ask. Yeah. So there is a Prometheus library that pretty much uh, just composes on top of your controllers. Sorry if I'm not using a proper .NET terminology, but that's pretty much what is happening. And exposes a slash metrics endpoint. And the way that looks like, let's say if you're looking at the metrics endpoint directly, let me try to show that to you. Yeah, it looks pretty much like this. Uh, this is the, let's say the Prometheus standard for how you should expose uh, metrics. And pretty much you have the metric name. Let me take a simpler one. Yeah, this one is pretty simple. You have the metric name and then you have various label for the metric. So here, for example, I requested the application to separate metrics by the return status code, by return method, by the path that was called, and then the value of the metric, right? So here, for example, the value of the metric says that this particular method get on the particular path slash was returned with status code 200, how many times? One time. And then in a follow-up office hour, I can show you how you can do very complicated uh, queries on these kind of metrics so as to show various things, such as how many errors do you get, how many, uh, how, how popular is your application, uh, which endpoint is more popular, uh, what is the request rate for various endpoints, and so on. Okay, and we also ask you to prepare a Docker file. And for this, we also have very nice examples, both for uh, Node.js, but also for its uh, .NET equivalent. Uh, and one of the most important things that we insist here, um, if you want, if you're serious about security and regulatory environments, I know it's a pain in the ass, but most of the container images out there are running as root, which is just not okay. And I know this is really, really difficult and it's really annoying and it requires some fixing from your end. But on the other hand, we're not your enemy. It's really the regulators that want you to take security seriously. It's regulators that need to make sure that the public can trust you. So it's, please don't fight uh, with us over it, but let us just help you make sure that your applications do not run as root. And for us, it's for these kind of applications, it's pretty much as simple as not exposing it on any port lower than 1024, because those are uh, reserved for root access. And then just making sure that your containers runs and some kind of user other than root. So just simply declaring any kind of user here, for example, we use user thousand in these examples is already achieving your goals. Yes. And once you have achieved all of these goals, I would say you're pretty much done. Uh, 